Hello ladies and gentlemen, Xentori here and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be discussing, or I'll be showing you in my opinion, some of the hardest aircraft to fly in Infinite Flight. Specifically, I'm going to show you my top 5 hardest aircraft to fly in Infinite Flight and there are quite a few on this list um, that I would normally put on this list. Now, we're going to start off with all of the Airbuses and I don't really think any of them make the list, okay? So that's that. Airbus, I think they're all quite straightforward to fly. Some of you might complain about the A380 being hard, but I think in general they're all quite straightforward to fly. But the first aircraft on this list is the 717 and let's just, let's, let's just go straight into it. We're going to some random airfield though, um, I didn't change that. Now, if you are new here and you've made it this far into the video, please make sure you like and subscribe it. All the support everyone's given me at the moment, um, it does mean a lot, especially with stuff that has been going on. So we are, um, we're, we're going to deal with that issue. And there we go. And we're going to go into maybe the short final view so I can um, just show you how tricky it is. So hopefully we can get airborne. So it's quite a tricky plane to control. Now, my biggest issue with the um, 717 is the physics of this aircraft. Now, what I mean by that is it is extremely hard to control and fly in general. My iPad's not far off a full tilt right now and we're not getting too much elevation at 240 knots. Um, so that is an issue with this aircraft. I think just in general, it's a difficult aircraft to fly. So if we just go into short final quickly, you can sort of see what I mean. But we need to go to slightly a bigger airport. Um, just so I can show you really for me how hard it is to actually land this airport. So we'll just go San Francisco and we'll do the um, the awesome approach on 28 left. Where you normally get parallel approaches or the famous parallel approaches you've seen um, definitely pop up on your devices before. So... Yeah, my big issue with the 717 on why I think it's one of the hardest aircraft to fly in infinite flight is it's just hard. <laughs> That's really my explanation. So as you can see, we're at what, a hundred and something knots here. We are at full, near, not even full flaps. And you can see with the HUD, it's just, it's just so low and it's just dropping too much. Um, so it's a really hard aircraft to fly in general. Um, and we are going quite fast, I think. Um, to be at this speed now shoot anyway with the aircraft so I'm gonna skip the short final because you don't all want to watch me do the approaches and we didn't even want that to happen we were at the completely wrong airport um, but we, we can give it a go so literally it is bang straight into the ground and that wasn't a smooth landing I can tell you that um, but it definitely was not a pretty landing so I think in general the 717 is definitely one of the hardest aircraft so if you can get a smooth landing on this air aircraft show me because I, I won't believe it until I see it. So show me on Instagram, Twitter, Discord. All the links are in the description if you want to show me that. So I think the 717 is definitely one of the hardest aircraft to fly in infinite flight. Now, the next one is the 737s. Now, I don't think they're awfully hard. So the 737-300, it's a nice plane. It's quite all right to fly. I find it a bit harder with these, the bigger 737s. So they're obviously not as hard for me with the 717. Um, but we'll take out the Turkish Airlines every why not. And I think it's quite hard because in general it was an aircraft to control. So of course we're just going to be using this view. I think, you know, it's nice and easy in the sense that you know what you're doing, etc. But to predict this aircraft, I think it takes a lot of time. Um, I think quite a few of you are going to disagree with this. But personally for me... Um, I always look for a nice, good, strong, smooth landing, and I can never seem to really get one with the 737, um, especially on takeoff. Sometimes I feel like the aircraft controls me a little bit more than I control it. Um, but again, I don't always use this aircraft on the regular. Um, it's not a common aircraft I use, and I find when I try and land, um, I always end up landing too slow. Although I do like to use full flaps, that might be a reason for that. Um, but I definitely think the 737, one of the hardest aircraft, again, to land in infinite flight. So we'll pop on to short final and hopefully the same thing won't happen as last time. There we go. Um, so we're just literally above the line. And I still think, I'm pretty sure the 737 lands a bit faster. If someone could tell me what the speed is, it would really help. Um, because I know there's normally someone down there able to help me out. But I just think the aircraft itself, like I'm going to get a smooth landing hopefully here. But... There we go. So that was a nice landing. But in general, I risk a tail strike. 
and much, much more. And I've just seen the control tower, and it looks really cool at this airport, so fair play. Um, so I think, again, it's, it's a hard aircraft for me to fly. That might just be me, um, but yeah. So I think the 747s then, um, I think they're big old aircraft, and you get the feel for that. The 757, since it's been you know updated in December, um, it was quite good. The 767, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, I don't think it's up there with the top five hardest. I personally think the 77 might be a bit harder. Um, but I've got to stick with that because I've said it. Now, the 777s, I think they're really good. And they move like a 777, 787 again. Now, this little thing, I, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. It, is, um, it can be a little bit of a pain, especially when you're landing it. Um, I think it's a bit weird, but you don't use it that often. Quite a few of you um, say the jets are quite hard, but the newly reworked um, F-18, which is really cool, um, I I don't see an issue with it. I think it's quite a nice plane to fly now. But we'll go into the C-17 Globemaster so I can show you all about it and what I mean by why it's hard. So you don't actually have a cockpit with this aircraft because it's so old and it's just really, really, it's like ancient. Like this is so old, this plane pretty much an infinite flight. Um, so we're just going to go kaboom. And like I said, you don't get a cockpit view. It's a bit of a weird aircraft again. And it just feels really heavy when I'm flying it. Um, again, I don't fly it too regularly. Um, I mean, I don't even have that much heavy weight on it. But I feel like it's just heavy and it drops. And this is the issue you have with older aircraft in infinite flight. Um, the physics on them is just a little bit weird and a little bit dodgy. So it's not really the best physics you could ever ask for in an infinite flight aircraft. So... We're just going to have to sway left and right because I've messed up the approach trying to show you all the aircraft, which, again, I have no regrets of doing. So hopefully if I tap on short final, there we go. And you can just see how 150 knots this aircraft is dropping. Now, I get it's a big, it's a heavy aircraft, but it's like, oh, okay, that was actually quite a good landing for it. Um, I just feel like it's a heavy aircraft. So if we try and recover from this and do a takeoff and just unarm those spoilers, um, hopefully you'll see as well again what I mean on takeoff. So we'll just slowly bring it up, and it's just it feels heavy. Now that might be the fact that the C-17 is just a heavy aircraft in general, but for me, I think it's a hard aircraft because like look, I'm turning as fast as I can, and it just doesn't really want to love you that much. Now I get it; it's a big military aircraft, but. It's still, in my opinion, one of the hardest aircraft to land at infant flight. Now, the next thing is this little terror. Now, for anything in my life, uh, I just can't do this plane. I don't know why, so I'm just going to bonk onto the short final here. Now, it's a small, tiny aircraft. I get that. It's small. It's lightweight. But taking off and landing this thing, it's like it's like it doesn't like me. Um, oh, we are on takeoff. So, we'll, like, I'll show you the takeoffs. So we I don't even know what the throttle is, but I feel like this aircraft just hates me. I feel like it's more of a passionate hate as well. So we gotta like try and balance it. Now it's not one of the easiest things to do, especially when you've got a bit of wind. And like, I do the tiniest bit of adjustment to try and stay centre line and the aircraft just despises me. So we'll just try and happily take off. It, it's really annoying how whenever I try and tell you guys something's like what's like bad, it, the sim just sort of works. It's quite annoying. Um, so we'll try a short final now, and hopefully you can see what I mean about on approaches. So it is again. It's just a oh, it's a bit of a nasty thing to try and get that landing you want without it bouncing. Now bouncing is one of the biggest issues I have. Um, now I feel like it is a general real life aviation issue as well, but the aircraft itself it fights me, um, and it's just a problem I have. So I know I'm pretty sure I want it to be like flat. Um, and I sort of want the HUD to come up with me, I think. Maybe if I land it first person, you guys will know what I mean, sort of. So we're just going to slowly get it. We, we're nearly there. Oh, come on, drop. Bang. And then it bounces. So that might be a just a general thing. Now we stalled um, with the um, aircraft here. But I just I find it really hard to work with and fly. Um, that's just my my honest opinion on the X-Cub. Um, I'm not its biggest fan, okay? I will be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of the X-Cub, but it's definitely a tricky one to fly um, and land. So the final aircraft 
It's none of the fighter jets. Now, these fighter jets are in pain if you're trying to fly them. It's not even the C-130. I think it flies quite nicely, the C-130, in my opinion. It's none of these jets. It's the Spitfire. It was close with the P-38, but we're going to go with the Spitfire. We'll call it a joint place, Spitfire and P-38. I think they're both quite hard, but I didn't want to use just the old Legacy planes. I wanted to include some of the other ones. Now, this cockpit... Um, probably shouldn't really talk too much about this cockpit because it's um, atrocious not in a bad way i understand it was made a long time ago but when we compare it to modern day infinite flight standards um just you know saving my not promising career there um so hopefully we can take off and we can gear this up no gear doesn't want to go up there we go so it's worth noting that the spitfire is from the 1940s it's an old aircraft. It's quite an elegant aircraft, but for an aircraft of its age, I'd expect it to be a little bit more, not durable, but agile. Because um, I feel like it turns a bit slowly in that. And I think it is definitely one of the harder aircraft to fly in infinite flight. So you've just seen me take it off. It's not too bad on takeoffs, um, but as a whole, I f I'd expect it to be a little bit more agile. But again, probably just me being pedantic. So we're going to short final with it. And um, we'll try and do a landing. It's a bit like with the X-Cob, I have the same issue. It's not just the X-Cob itself. I, I think it's just front geared planes, um, which I just don't get along with. So we'll just try and um, knock this one on the ground. Oh, we've gone down way too quick. And bang. So it does bounce. And I think they are I think they are meant to bounce now, I say it. I feel like they are supposed to bounce. Um, so it might just be me being a little bit stupid. But, oh, no, 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 oh, we've done it. As you can see, it's a hard aircraft. <laughs> and that's the point of the video. I was waiting for me to crash one. I didn't even want to crash one, but I knew it was going to happen. Um, but the aircraft itself on the exterior looks really good. Um, it's just it's just a little you know cockpit in there, which needs a bit of work. So, all in all, I think these are definitely some of the five hardest aircraft to land. I feel like the MD and the DCs, the McDonald planes, are fine. I, the P-38 is a hard plane and all of these Lockheed Martin ones are quite tricky. Um, I feel like the big, you know, military ones aren't as hard. Um, I think they're definitely a little bit nicer. Um, and we got the F-14, that's a pain, and the F-16, they're all hard. But I think all in all, these aren't that bad. So, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Good night. Find your way into this wonderland, cross the mist.